Welcome to Geneva Presbyterian Church in Laguna Woods, California, on this second Sunday after Epiphany. We're glad you're here. All are welcome. We're grateful that you have chosen to worship with the Geneva Community of Faith. We aspire to be an inclusive congregation, worshiping, learning, connecting, giving, and serving together. If you'd like to know more about Geneva Presbyterian Church, text the word WELCOME to 949-575-8675. Messaging and data rates may apply. All women of the church are invited to attend the Geneva Presbyterian Women Luncheon on Wednesday, January 18th at 12 p.m. in Simpson Hall. That's next Wednesday. Join organist Lynette Ball McGee for an organ recital, It's All Connected, on Friday evening, January 27th at 7 p.m. The next Tough Talks education offering is Sunday, January 29th at 1130 
in Simpson Hall following the 1030 worship service. Lunch is provided, a donation is suggested. The stated annual meeting of the congregation is Sunday, February 5th, immediately following the 10.30 a.m. worship service in Simpson Hall. The business items are the reception of the 2023 budget and approval of the terms of call for Pastor Steve and Pastor Ryan. Lunch is provided, a donation is suggested. There is so much more going on at Geneva. To explore all the fellowship and service opportunities, go to our website, GenevaPress.org, or download the Church Center app on your smartphone or tablet. And do stay up with what's going on in your church. We're glad you're a part of it. At this time, I want to introduce Lisa Kagan, one of our Stephen ministry leaders, who gave the following description of the benefits of that ministry which aired early in the pandemic. Good morning, everyone. Three years ago, we restarted Stephen Ministry here at Geneva. As you may know, Stephen ministers are lay congregation members trained to provide one-to-one -one Christ centered care. As volunteers, we went through 50 hours of training that very first year, and we continue to have ongoing education. This year, we are training our third group of volunteers here at Geneva. A Stephen minister typically works with one person at a time and meets with that person once a week to care, to listen, to pray together, and offer emotional and spiritual support. During COVID, that meeting is by phone. The schedule is flexible. You can meet more or less often. It can last for weeks, months, or even years. It depends on what the care receiver needs and wants. Are you going through a difficult time? Do you want someone to talk to, to listen to you, to walk with you through these challenges? A Stephen minister may be appropriate for you. If you are experiencing any of life's difficulties, grief, loss, divorce, hospitalization, long-term care, chronic or terminal illness, disability, job loss, or any of life's struggles. Maybe you're a caregiver for someone and you're devoting all your attention and all your energy to take care of somebody else. And maybe you need someone to take care of you and to listen to you. Over a million and a half people have received care from a Stephen minister. Maybe this is the time for you. We are here to help. In the book of Acts, Stephen was chosen to provide caring ministry for those in need. Caring ministry has always been considered a hallmark of the Christian faith community. The Stephen ministry motto is Christ caring for people, through people. We come into a person's life at any point when you know ahead that something is coming, when you are in the middle of a crisis or after the crisis. Sometimes Stephen ministers are referred to as the after people because we are there after the phone call that you hoped you'd never get. After the funeral, when everyone has left and the emotions that you've have held at bay come crashing down on you. After the relationship falls apart and the bottom falls out of your life. After the doctor says, I'm sorry, there's nothing more we can do. After the nursing home director shakes your hand and says, welcome to your new home. After you find a pink slip with your final paycheck. After your family and your friends have heard your story one too many times, but you still need to talk it out. We as Stephen ministers are ready to come alongside you and provide comfort and support for as long after as needed. If you would like to request a Stephen minister, contact the church. 
You can do that through our website at GenevaPress.org. We have a special email, caring, C-A-R-I-N-G, at GenevaPress.org. Or call the, call the church and speak to Pastor Steve. He will discuss it with you and match you with an appropriate person. Everything is confidential. No one will know that you have a Stephen minister. Only Pastor Steve and the St Stephen minister team leader. Everything you discuss with your Stephen minister will be confidential, and you are under no obligation for anything. There's no preset time commitment. As Stephen ministers, we're not trained therapists. We can't heal you, we can't fix the problem, and we can't make it go away. But we can be there for you. We can listen well, and we care. We bring Christ's love, and we can walk with you during this time of need for as long as you need us. We are here for you. Thank you, and God bless you. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing a new song, a song of thanks and praise. For God has done wondrous deeds and is great beyond compare. The Psalter reading is from Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry brog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregations. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins to God, for the Holy One is steadfast in love and always ready to forgive. Mothering God, we have chased after foolish things and spent our strength on vanity. Our labor has been in vain. Identity forming God, hear our confession and those we now offer in silence. May we listen to you as well. Deliver us from the arrogance and forgive our self-concerns that we may find our reward with you as servants of your dream. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. The power of confession, individually and as a community of faith. The power of forgiveness to individuals and to the community of faith. Let's continue to be a blessing to one another 
through the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us continue in our worship of God. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow, and in his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord that my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, and slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends our strife, such a life as killeth death. Come, my light, my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast has made strength as makes his guest. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy. The epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, and to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks always to my God, always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind. 
just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. Listen, 2 and 4, the Word of God. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, take the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and may they be pleasing to you, transforming to us. For you, O oh God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Your identity in Christ drives behavior, not the word Christian. Let me say that again. Your identity in Christ drives behavior, not the word Christian. Toy Story 3, scene 33, goes like this. Goodbye Andy relates this experience regarding the significance of one's identity on one's behavior. In the movie, Toy Story 3, Andy, the owner of Woody, Buzz Lightyear and other toys, is preparing to leave for college. At the end of the movie, he decides to give his toys to a young girl named Bonnie. The scene starts with Andy entering the front gate of Bonnie's home and showing her the box of toys. Andy tells her, I'm Andy. Someone told me you're really good with toys. These are mine, but I'm going away now, so I need someone really special to play with them. Then as Andy proceeds to hand the toys to Bonnie, he introduces them by saying something special about each one. He begins with his toy cowgirl, Jessie. This is Jessie, the roughest, toughest cowgirl in the whole West. She loves critters, but none more than her best pal, Bullseye. Andy then hands Bonnie his toy Tyrannosaurus Rex, the meanest, most terrifying dinosaur who ever lived. For the potato heads, Andy says, 
the potato heads, Mr. and Mrs., you got to keep them together because they, they're madly in love. Slinky the dog is as loyal as any dog you could want. And he blesses Ham, the pig, by saying, he'll keep your money safe. But he's also one of the most dastardly villains of all time, evil Dr. Porkchop. Buzz Lightyear is the coolest toy ever. Look, he can fly and shoot lasers. He's sworn to protect the galaxy from the evil Emperor Zurg. Finally, for his pal Woody, Andy says, he's been my pal as long as I can remember. He's brave like a cowboy should be and kind and smart. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what, end quote. God is with us, no matter what, in and through Jesus. Each of our texts, Isaiah 49, 1 through 7, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 through 9, and John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42, articulate the importance of call, witness, restoration, and God's view of our identity, even when it falters. The text in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 1 through 9, makes two points for our consideration about coming to God and seeing our identity through God's eyes on a regular basis. First, there is trouble and conflict in the church at Corinth. The troubles in the church at Corinth are no different than those in the contemporary church. Disputes over doctrine. Lawsuits, inappropriate sexual behavior. The church in Corinth was filled with drunks, sex fiends, and argumentative troublemakers. Take note of the identity language Paul uses to begin this letter to the Christians at the church in Corinth. Paul is, quote, called to be an apostle by the will of God, end quote, in verse 1. Note how the receivers of this letter are not identified as drunks, sex fiends, and argumentative troublemakers, but saints in verse 2. The most important thing is not the trouble and conflict, but the call. Paul is already an apostle. The Corinthians are saints now. There is not some future time they will be better Christians. It is now and always progressing in knowledge, experience, and behaviors that are Christian. Second, when God looks at our church as it was when God looked at the church in Corinth, God does not see failures and troublemakers, but saints. The church in Corinth received a greeting of grace and peace from Paul in this letter. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 reads, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. The difference grace and peace provide to the troubled and conflict-riddled church in Corinth is the ability to practice forgiveness, correction, refocusing on Jesus, and fine-tuning the call, witness, and identity placed on each believer. The text in John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42, makes two points for our consideration about coming to God and seeing our identity through God's eyes on a regular basis. First, Jesus is the word in the flesh 
and all things are brought into being with light and life through Jesus. The single witness of the church is Jesus, his identity and character. Jesus cannot be contained in human ideals and categories. You are invited to explore the nature of call, witness, and identity in Christ. This is done by trusting God as the source, sustainer, and focus of our call, witness, and identity. Second, focusing on Jesus, we better understand our call, witness, and identity. Focusing on Jesus then allows you to rest and abide in God's presence as you move deeper and deeper in experiencing the profoundness of call, witness, and identity in Christ. As a follower of Jesus, you are invited to slow down and reflect upon God's ongoing work of deepening your sense of self and sense of worth in the one who knows you the best and loves you the most. That one, that being God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come and see believers together undergoing transformation as an act of God. Come and see Christians being identified by their words and actions that provides the deeper meaning of the name Christian. In this way, you can reclaim the power of the name Christian and the symbol of the cross through your words and actions. Your behaviors tell people you're a Christian. You don't need to tell people you're a Christian. Timothy Keller writes this about being anchored in transformation and words and behaviors that display the identity of God known in Jesus Christ. Quote, unlike either traditional or secular culture, a Christian's identity is not achieved, but received. Let me say that again. Quoting Keller, unlike either traditional or secular culture, A Christian's identity is not achieved, but received. When we ask God the Father to accept us, adopt us, unite with us, not on the basis of our performance and moral efforts, but because of Christ, we receive a relationship with God that is a gift. It's not based on our past, present, or future attainments but on Christ's spiritual attainments, end quote. Your identity in Christ drives behavior, not the word Christian. In fact, sometimes the word Christian is a real put off to people. They, they already have preconceived ideas of what that word means. But when your identity is in Christ and you're receiving that love and that hope and that peace and that joy and that confidence of character that God is with you always, your identity in Christ drives behavior, not the word Christian. God's acting in Jesus makes salvation real. You will know who you are and to whom you belong, Jesus. Trust God as the source of sustainer, and focus of your call, witness, and identity. Experience the profoundness of your call, witness, and identity in Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, you are so gracious and loving, and we come to you seeking your presence in our lives and in people's lives around the globe, that the call and witness of Christians would be so profound because their behaviors are communicating what the world needs, hope, 
love, peace, and joy. There are others seeking to know that their lives really matter. But the things they're seeking can't come through. So we pray, God, for the call and the witness of Christians through their behavior that becomes <clears throat> compelling to others. We pray for the end of war and famine and homelessness and malnutrition and all the things that are just destroying life, domestic violence. Oh, we're just praying, God, for um, the end of shootings um, and taking uh, lives unnecessarily and in crazy ways. And, and yet, God, we know that we should pray boldly like that, but it's going to take a work of your spirit, not only in followers of Jesus' lives, but just the human spirit of those who might not have any religious convictions. We need to expect, God, you to change us the way we think and the way we live. We pray for those who come to mind that we know are suffering and hurting and isolated and lonely and filled with despair and wondering if they'll get enough money to be able to pay next month's rent or to even buy groceries. And God, it's just such a struggle when some people might be down to the last uh, spoon of peanut butter or there's one piece of bread left. Um, they might have $2 in a checking account. Uh, I've heard that story last week. God, help us receive the gift of you. Let us let go of striving that it's up to us to attain your grace and mercy. And to that end, we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know if you know that the word amen can be translated, so be it. The next time you pray the Lord's Prayer, it is just basic stuff that God has promised to provide. Why don't you say, so be it, instead of amen? I bet it will mean something even more profound. Because you're saying, so be it, God that I can trust you for my daily bread. I can trust you with my very life. I hope each of you has had a loving and inclusive experience in worship today. If so, you will be even more effective in how you remember, tell, and live the way of Jesus by being just, kind, and humble. We thank you for your ongoing faithfulness in your tithes, offerings, and service. Truly, we are thankful for your faithfulness. You know, we all know we're living in times of high inflation, even though it's dropping a little bit right now, and a dozen eggs costing over $7 here in California. I don't know if it's that expensive all the way across the United States. But people are really struggling. But, you know, we still need to be obedient to God's call for us to be generous to fund ministries on this campus, our local, national, and international mission partners, the Deacon Fund, which pays people's rent sometimes, pays electric bills, gas bills. We're trying to meet human need through Stater Brother gift cards. You help fund that work as well as the special offerings of the Presbyterian Church USA. 
For opportunities to serve, please click the Serve tab at the top of the home page, and then click the Local Partners tab for a list of opportunities. Do you know that South County Outreach needs many more volunteers to come in each day and restock shelves and help some of the clients find what they're looking for? What a powerful ministry. Check our, the Local Partners tab and See the other ways you can get involved with hands-on ministry, hands-on service to those who really need you walking with them. Remember, giving and serving from your life wallet is foundational to our calling as Christians. In fact, giving and serving as a behavior will say more to others about what a Christian is than you saying, hey, I'm a Christian. That's why I give and serve. Be generous. Live generously. Give and serve today. Receive this blessing. We've gathered for worship. We've read God's word We've heard a proclamation of God's word. I now charge you to go into God's world with the very stamp of Christ on your life. For you will be the best Jesus that someone sees. Now may the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ be yours this day and every day until we gather again next Sunday for worship as a community of faith, coming and seeing God at work, coming and seeing and experiencing God at work. Amen. Amen.